Hello, everybody, and welcome to my guide to the Perilous Moons, or the Moons of Peril, or Napotsley, whatever you want to call it. If you don't already know, this is part of the new Varlamort Part 1 expansion to RuneScape, um, which you can go ahead and access. Uh, it only requires you to do a couple quests, but for this guide, we're just going to be focusing on the bosses, and the end of the quest requires you to kind of do the bosses anyways. Now, these bosses are kind of designed in the style of Barrows, where you'll be going, you'll be fighting all three of them, uh, and then you'll be able to loot a chest at the end. I'm going to have really been enjoying it. So I hope you can kind of, you know, get your feet in the door and try it out yourself. Now, the name of the game for these bosses is going to be getting a nice defensive setup. You can see that for my gear, I'm basically just using Barrow stuff, uh, Torag helmet, plate body, and plate legs. We're going with an Infernal or a Fire Cape, basically just whatever cape you can get. And similarly with the rest of my gear, we're going with a Blood Fury, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, and Brimstone Ring. These are kind of like a more defensive options. You can also see I'm using a Dragon Fire Shield instead of a Defender. Now you can choose to go with like a Torture, Berserker Ring, and Ferocious Gloves. You're going to get a little bit more uh, damage at the cost of a little bit of tankiness. But I don't know exactly um, you know, where the numbers are going to perfectly line up. And basically the idea behind this is that the bosses really do... You know, you need a lot of defense for them or, because uh, they're going to attack you three times. And if you dodge a hit, let's say you get like a zero on one of them, then the next hit in the three hit sequence is also going to be a zero. So let's say the first one hits, but then you miss the second one, then the third one's also going to miss. So you're only taking a little bit of damage and they actually do more damage with each subsequent hit. So if you get hit by all three, you could take up to like 32 damage total. It's quite a bit. And also successful hits also apply a debuff to you. Uh, the blood boss in particular can heal a ton if he's hitting you and you're not, um, you know, you don't have the defense for it. So I would definitely say just start off with a defensive setup and then uh, adjust accordingly. You can probably add in some more aggressive options. For my weapon, I've just been using a fang. It's pretty damn simple, although you can also bring an abyssal tentacle. Um, a rapier is probably great too, basic, or, or a whip. Basically, just whatever weapon you have for your range of bet zombie axe is also totally fine here as well. Each boss is weak to a specific style, so you could bring a stab, a slash, and a crush weapon if you really wanted to. Uh, but I've been doing it all with a fang and really no problem at all there. Hosta is probably better. I just don't really have one right now, so <laughs> yeah. And you can also see that for the rest of my inventory setup. Again, these are just swaps I'm bringing just to showcase for it. The only other stuff that I would definitely bring is some kind of spec weapon. This could be like a dragon dagger. Dragon Claws, basically whatever you have, just some kind of melee spec weapon. Um, and you can also go ahead and bring some really nice, slow, heavy weapon. Doesn't matter how uh, slow it is, you're going to be using this for the Eclipse boss. Um, and I'll kind of get into that once we get there. They might ask, can I do this with Ranger Mage? And you, you can. However, again, because defensive gear is so important, it feels like melee just makes the most amount of sense. I tried doing this with like a Bofa and Crystal Armor, and it was I was just getting hit a lot. Um, so I guess if you had like fortified Masori, you could probably try it out with like a armadillo crossbow or something like that. I don't know, but it's uh, you can do it with mage and range, but definitely feels like melee is just the way to go if you're trying to get like consistent kills. And for the rest of my inventory, I just have two prayer potions and a bit of food. Um, the reason why I'm basically bringing nothing is because you can actually get all the supplies inside and I am going to get over how you can prep all your supplies inside. Uh, don't worry, it's not like Chambers of Zeric. It doesn't take very long at all. You can get it very, very fast, get everything you need, and uh, basically just do infinite laps as much as you want with little to no supply costs at all. As for required stats, I believe the recommended level is 75 combat. So um, me, I have max stats, so it's, I'm not 100% sure. I'm probably going to do a bit more testing um, on like my Iron Man just to see how that goes. But I would probably say like if you have like 80 and all your stats, maybe like 70 defense, so you can wear Barrows you're going to be just fine. You could probably do it with a little bit lower. Um, it'll just be a little bit slower. With that said, let's go ahead and just get into a run. I'm basically just going to be doing the run as normal. Again, you do have to complete the quest to actually get here, which I'm not going to be going into. Um, but yeah, do that. So here's kind of the central hub. I always start going to the blood boss first when I do my order. If you do want to prep, you could probably go to one of the other rooms first. Um, but yeah, don't worry about that too much. I just bring a little bit of food so I don't have to do prep on my very first run. Now, very simple, you're going to just run through this part. This first part is not, there's kind of like three prep rooms, and this one just has a bunch of mobs, which I don't really see a reason for you to be killing them. We'll talk about these mods a little bit later, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, there, In each of the prep rooms, there's also some cooking stoves where you can cook food. You can also grab a cup of tea to restore your run energy and grab some supplies. We're going to go ahead and grab the fishing supplies. Hunter Supplies, and Herblore. Again, you don't have to do this, but it's definitely going to come in handy later on. Let me just manage my inventory a little bit here. Okay. 
And we're going to head into the very first boss here. I'll show prep after the first boss, just because um, this is the sequence that I do. Again, you can go straight from the third boss back into the first boss when you do like multiple runs of this. So it's not really a huge issue. The blood boss, I believe, is weak to slash. So I'm actually going to go ahead and try out the tentacle here. Just see how it goes. Now, for all these bosses, the most important mechanic is you have to step on this glyph while you're attacking them. You can see that I'm not praying overheads. I don't really know if praying overheads is good or not. I've been able to be just fine without having to pray overheads, but some people like to pray the overheads, and honestly, it's pretty easy to get your prayer back. So do what you will. Anyways, stand on the glyph, attack the boss. It's going to do a little bit of healing based on how much it hits you, but again, if you're tanky, you should be fine. Here's the first special, Blood Rain. Every boss has two specials, basically. And uh, you can see, you just have to walk and dodge. Also, as for the boss progression, you can see that there's a lot of people here, but really, it is a solo fight. It doesn't really matter what everybody else is doing. You have your own health bar. You can see everybody else is attacking the boss. The only thing that matters is my contribution to the fight. Nothing's really changing. It's completely existing on its own. I'm not really doing anything. You see, he hit me that time, so he's getting a pretty massive heal, right? Anyways, I'm going to wait a little bit just so I can show you guys the second special. Typically, obviously, you would just be doing damage. And again, you can see he did quite a bit of damage to me there. So that's why he's healing. For the second special, you want to go and find your Jaguar and start attacking it. Now, you can just sit here and attack it if you'd like. However, if you want to game a little bit, you can click back. I messed that up, but let me try to get the timing here right. Step back and attack. At the last frame, you basically, or last tick, you want to step back into the put puddle. And uh, sound effects really help here. And then attack it. And this way you dodge the uh, Jaguar hit as well. Once you're done, head back to the new glyph. You can eat up food if you'd like. I know some people thought that eating food heals the boss. I haven't seen that. I've been able to eat just fine. Uh, and then you can go ahead and attack it. Again, I don't pray overheads. I just camp piety. You can do chivalry, whatever you want. Um, I haven't found that overheads are particularly impactful, but maybe if... You're, uh, if you're low level, maybe it helps. I don't know. I see a lot of other people do it, so maybe I'm wrong on that. Okay, so we're going to go over prep really quick. You can see there's actually a whole bunch of rooms in this area, and I just go in this like clockwise pattern. It's nice and simple. So first thing you're going to go ahead and do, if you need food, the best way you can do it is just by, again, grabbing rope. You can go ahead and set up a trap by hitting all of these rocks. It's going to create a hunter trap here. And based on your hunter level, I think more of these uh, lizards get released. I have a pretty decent hunter level at 80. I'll go ahead and uh, pick up all of these lizards. One, two, three. And if I bring them back over here, I can go ahead and cook them. And you can see that this actually heals, I believe the lizards heal for 30. So uh, that's food taken care of. We're basically completely good. Um, let me go ahead and move all my supplies down here because we don't really need them for now. But yeah, a lot of food, very easy to get. If you would like to restore prayer potions, you have two ways of doing that. You can either equip the butterfly net and you can catch these moonlight moths. This does require, I think, 75 hunter. So it's a little bit, but you can see it restores 20 prayer potions, which is pretty good. Additionally, if you'd like, and I don't know what herb lore level you need for this, but you can also go ahead and look for grubby saplings, which are located on, uh, I believe both of these ones have the prep. These are kind of the prep rooms, the cavern and the, basically the caverns. Uh, you can take the moonlight grub, you can use it on a pestle and mortar, and then add it to your potions. And now these are essentially our new prayer potions. And in addition, when we drink them, it's also going to boost our stats like a super combat, divine super combat, actually. So now we're boosted up to 125 defense, 118, and we restore a little bit of prayer. This is a very, very good potion. You should definitely be using it. And again, this is why I really don't really recommend bringing too much prep with you because you can sustain quite a bit. And uh, it doesn't take very long at all to do this. So, yeah, very simply. Now we're going to go ahead go into the second room. This second guy, the Blue Moon, I believe is weak to Crush. So uh, we can go ahead and bring out our Fang. But again, do whatever you'd like. It's not that bad. I use I use Fang. Or, yeah, this guy's weak to Crush. So if you had, like, a good Crush weapon, you could probably use that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you're just fine. Again, I don't really worry about... Praying melee, I've never really had an issue, but you can see a lot of people do pray melee. So again, this might just be something if you're a little bit lower defense, you have to do just in case you're taking more damage. Now for this special, he's going to put your weapon in a block, uh, block. You have to walk up, 
you're going to be able to attack it two times, dodge the ice. Once you see him pop up, you can go ahead and attack. Make sure you dodge the blast. You're going to get your weapon back from the ice. Once you got your weapon back, just go ahead and head back to the middle. Again, number one priority for all these bosses is to stand on the glyph, which will allow you to do damage. If you're not standing on the glyph, you will take crazy amounts of damage. You can see, again, my prayer is going a little bit low. I can go ahead and drink the prayer potion. It's like 30 prayer. It's absolutely insane. And we're going to go ahead and game. I'm going to go ahead and pause here just a little bit so I can get the second special. Again, just moving to the next glyph. You see, if I stand over here, I'm going to take absolutely crazy amounts of damage quite fast unless the glyph moves to me. Okay, just going to pause right here and wait for the special to come out. The second special is the braziers. Pretty simply, you need to go light up the braziers on both ends of the room while dodging these little uh, tornadoes on the ground. If you do get hit, they will um, take out your run energy or like they'll disable your run. So just turn that off. Also, you can tile skip by kind of like walking through them like this if you understand how to do that. If you walk two tiles at once, you can basically do that. This is also a nice little safe spot you can do. It's a little bit nicer. It's out of the way of them. So you can use this as like a little place to chill for a bit. <laughs> chill, get it because it's an icy room. Um, and again, you can see here. I eat the cooked moss. It's going to heal me for 30. This is why I like doing the lizards because they heal 30. It's very, very good. Kill the boss. It's going to teleport you to the next room and you keep going in the cycle. Okay. So now we're in the final room. Again, we could do, we can go get uh, grubby saplings if we wanted to go prep another potion. One thing you can also do in um, this room is you can also fish for food. Let's say you don't have the hunter or maybe you just ran out of food and you don't want to go back and get some more. So what you can do is you can put the fish here and you can actually align with like these tiles right here. I think these ones right here. You can use these three tiles to align your net basically to try to catch them. I haven't quite figured out exactly how to do this, but I'm kind of bad at the fishing mini game. But basically, yeah, you align it or you can just AFK for a bit. The fish heal 25. They're also quite good. So yeah, fish are, fish are quite good. Again, we can either use our prayer potion or equip the butterfly net, and we're going to go ahead and catch two of these. The last boss is just through this room. This is the Eclipse boss. I'm going to catch a couple moths, and I'm done. It's just that simple, right? This is why I think prep is better, because you get your prayer back up, and honestly, if I had all the food in the world, I'd be fine. Now, this last boss, the Eclipse one, I believe is weak to stab, so I'm going to use a fang, but again, Hasta would be just fine here as well. And we can go ahead, turn this on. My run energy is a little bit low. Again, I could have uh, drank the cup of tea. That would have been good. So for this boss, there's two specials. He's going to summon this little thing. And all you do is you're just going to walk. You're going to walk over here. You can either disable or I have a setting where I do control click. I haven't quite figured out if I like this like run thing or if I like this walk thing better. I think it's just personal preference, honestly. But you can see a lot of people are just kind of walking behind it. Stay behind the shield so he doesn't hit you. If it does hit you, it does very little damage. So it's not the end of the world. Just again, you can either kind of walk and take little breaks or just... Control click to walk or disable walk, whatever you prefer. Now, we go back onto our glyph and we're going to be attacking him. Same idea. The second special that he does, you have to make sure to face them. So we're going to go ahead and try to get that. Um, basically, you can't turn your back to him. He's going to summon clones and you have to make sure to face them. This is why we're going to bring a very, very slow weapon. Because a slow weapon um, is very good for this boss in particular. So here's our special. Let's go ahead and equip our BGS, right? And you can see here, I'm just going to wait for them to spawn. As soon as it spawns, I'm going to click under it. And then you just got to get the timing right. Click. I messed up that time. But again, click. As soon as you see the experience drop, go to the next one. And the timing's a little bit tight. But you can see I'm getting all three hits. One, two, three. So click. As soon as you see the experience drop, click to the next one. I just spam click the next one, basically. Spam click the next one. You can't actually kill him at one HP, but I think you can with like some of the uh like I've seen some some weapons like the the guys from this one, they'll actually be able to kill him during that special. Uh so with that done, we've actually killed all three of the bosses. We can go ahead, restore our run energy with the cup of tea. It's gonna bring us back to exactly that same room that we were already at. Again, grab fish if you want to, do whatever prep you want to for your next cycle, because we're gonna go right into the next cycle. Um, I like to catch some moths on the way out. And instead of going back to the Eclipse boss, we're actually going to go this way to the loot chest, eat some food, get back up healthy. And we can go ahead and head over to the loot chest, which is just right here. You can see we have a check mark. We've done all three bosses. And let's see. We can go ahead and claim it. You get bone shards, 
all the new uniques, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not really going to cover all those rewards, but yeah, that's the run. Uh, so it's very, very simple. You could just take all that. Um, I unfortunately decided to uh, put it. I accidentally took. I didn't bank it, so I'm going to drop some random stuff that I have, so I can uh, put this in my bank later. And now, very simply, you can go back and start like the counterclockwise if you'd like, but I just do the exact same pattern. I go right back into the blood room. And I'm basically ready to start a new cycle exactly like I started. Go to the cooking fire, restore your run energy, and you start the Blood Moon boss uh, all over again. And that's Perilous Moons. You can do these runs very nice, consistently. You can see I'm fully prepped now. I have all the food in the world. I have all the potions in the world. I'm basically fully ready to go. Um, and yeah, that's you could do this. Uh, yeah, so it's just it's really really nice. It's really convenient. I like that you can get all the prep done very nice and fast. Uh, and the bosses themselves are quite fun. And there's a decent amount of challenge to them. Um, they're pretty easy. But, you know, there's a little bit to learn, especially with, like, the special mechanics as well. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys get some loot yourselves. You get a chance to try out the boss, finish the quest. It does give a lot of Slayer experience, so it's definitely a quest worth doing. Um, have fun. Let me know what you think. And if there's any new stuff that comes out, I'll be sure to cover it. Again, this is literally a day one guide. Um, I only have, like, you know, like less than 20 kc of it so uh but yeah i just wanted to put it out just to show you guys kind of what i've been doing and help you out if you need that as well thanks for watching see you guys in the next video and enjoy varl more